Um, the idea of this one is that we can just type in some commands. Um, my order to you, submit. Um, if I press this button on the panel, which I'm doing right now, you see that we're sending over the text string, my command, my order, to the connected of the server we're connected to. Hello there, in this video, Innovation Lab from Skyhoy will talk a little bit about the TCP device core for Blue Pill. And um, this is Reactor, this is the environment where we usually use device cores. These are um, usually installed inside the packages section here, and we can go through the list and find the Skahoy protocol TCP device core right here. So this is the one. If it was not already in this list, it would be down here somewhere and you just search for that name. But right now we would use it as it is right here. Now, normally when you have installed it, you don't need to worry about starting and stopping things in here because if you're using Reactor, then um, over here in the home screen, you basically just need to search for a device. So all we need to do here is to find the, let me see, TCP, TCP device core, it's right here. Default model of the core, yeah, okay. That's fine, that's the only one we have, so select. And um, here we are. So basically we are setting up uh, one instance of the TCP device core to talk to something. We need an IP address. So this would be your ROS talk server or whatever device you wanna control that um, where, where you want to have this generic control. In our case, we will use the IP address of my computer because I wanna start a, um, I wanna start a, TCP server on this machine for this demonstration. And um, my port of choice would be this one. So I am basically set up right now and uh, should be able to, to connect to this and see that work. Um, model description and so on, that's just for you to fill in. Uh, let's just save this one. And now we have one device connected here. You see it's actually, uh, it actually is connected and um, it's not anymore because I just stopped the server. I'm sorry about that. I had that running in the background because I want to show you how this would actually work. Um, no, actually, before we do that, let's just take a look at some of the other things we, we can configure because we I can't show you very much <clears throat> right now by just connecting. It's connecting and it's not doing anything. But um, we can put in an, in an initial command, a periodic command, and then also a test command. And I think we should do that to see what those would do. So we can just go totally basic. Hello. And um, here I am again. And that would happen if every three seconds or two seconds. This is milliseconds. It has to be more than 50. And finally, a test command. Tests, exclamation mark. So now I put in those things, and that means whenever we set up a server for this one, it's currently trying to connect to my computer here, but it won't be successful in doing that. But uh, then I go over here, and in this terminal, I want to show you a little tool that is really, really useful here. This is, this is called IP server, and this is uh, available from Skahoy if you're looking at this video from outside Skahoy. And it just gives us a chance to set up a a server on a port. So if I type in the port, you can see that in the parameter list right here, that that would be the port number. And then there are a number of options that we can add to have uh, different types of behavior, but this is all you need to do. So basically we have a TCP server right now and you can actually see it receives messages. It received the hello message from Reactor. The moment the device call connected, I got the message hello, and then I'm now getting the message. Here I am again, every two seconds. So actually, and that would be interesting, right? That would be to see what happens if I press the test button over here. So what happens if I press the test button? And let me just put this window aside so you have a chance to see it. That would be that as I'm confirming that I want to perform the test, it is sending this test string over. Okay. So we, and, and you can basically align that with whatever device you are going to control. That could be recalling home position on a PC camera or... Um, setting some default values. But the idea of the test button is that it's something you can you can press to see, okay, I am connected in case you were in doubt about that. So that's uh, sort of useful. Let's go back to this view because I wanna talk about some of the features that the command strings has. And 
If you go to the Viki and you look in the description of our TCP device core page here, you see that we have a number of features like new line and we should try that out. So actually, if you look at the, the commands that we are sending, like period, then if we type that in, no, wait, then I put in like new line like here because there is no new line character right now. It's just ending on the exclamation mark. You can see that over in the in the received values, but uh, often you want to have a new line in this type of communication. So you can put that in. You can also put in a carriage return. So that's two of the things that we saw over on the Viki. And there are more things because sometimes and that's quite often the case, you might want to have actually a such, you know, a hex string of stuff going on. Let's do that for the test, for instance. So if I do this like a backslash H, and then I could have um, AA uh, a space um, 12, 65. So let's just have those. I could even combine it with a new line if I wanted. But the idea here is that you can build up command strings using ASCII characters, but they will be transmitted as uh, actual bytes. Uh, you can also do it in decimal. So if you if you look at the Viki, you see that um, nah, wait, that's actually not true. Not in this case. That's something else. Let's just save that for later. It's nah, it's not even slash h. It's slash x. Sorry about that. Okay, so we put in the slash x like here, and actually let's remove the spaces in between because the most probable scenario is that you have a number of bytes that you want to communicate like this in a binary, you know, as a binary transition. And then also the new line wouldn't make sense. So these these are uh, three bytes entered as hex values, and that will be sent as those, you know, as bytes as such. And um, that that's a useful feature of the device core that you can also go hex if uh, if you want. So what you see is that we actually um, had the device core rebooted. We are now sending period. You notice that there is actually a new line. Now you have new line and you have carriage return here at the end of the string. You see that in the server over here. And if I press the test button, you will see that I get exactly those three bytes sent over, which in terms of ASCII interpretation doesn't make any sense. So that's that's working out really well. We have all the bases uh, established right now for, for what you want to Okay, so I realized I didn't really introduce this IP tool fully. We just saw that it connected as soon as I started the server. That's super great. Um, but just to make sure you understand, because sometimes it's nice to have a client that can connect to this one. So often on a Mac, NC works out of the box. Telnet, it's sometimes called. You have your PewDie or PuDi or whatever it's called on Windows. But um, if you want to use that from this one, we can connect to localhost, the same port as here. And then if I type in uh, hello, then you see that this message is sent over from my little terminal here where I'm connected. And uh, th that's now that's the second connection. Reactor was the first one. Actually, it's possible over here in the uh, IP server uh, application to also send stuff back. And um, if I wrote hello world, the most obvious disadvantage is that it gets broken up by the received input. So, but still, if I press enter, it's actually sending out that string to the connected clients, including Reactor in this case. So we have a full situation here with an IP server where you can communicate back by typing in text strings and you can, uh, from over here, uh, receive those strings. At this point, it would be beneficial if we stopped this periodic pinging. So we can just set this value to zero and it's going to stop right away. So we don't see this um, coming over all the time. Uh, we could still, if we want to make sure that we see this uh, test connection, we can see the test connection actually works. And uh, if we go to our terminal here, uh, it's possible to now write hello world without any disturb disturbances uh, coming our way. All right, so that's fine. Um, I, let's let's look at some of the parameters in the device core and uh, how we can con connect this to uh, to React actually. So let's just um, set up a panel, and I'm searching for this one on my network. So I'm connecting that, and then I go to the configuration tab, and um, here in the configuration tab for my React Fusion Live, oh I think it's selected a default, and I don't want that. In this case, I just want to have 
a custom configuration, which we should give a name. So testing TCP. Of course, you can also add this on top of existing configurations to mix it in and so on. But for the clarity of things, I just want to keep it like this in this demonstration. Okay, so our the layer we have for building up our configuration is right here. And I will uh, click a button on my panel and that would be the one. This is the right fusion live. So on this layer I'm on right now, I can create a behavior. I want to do that. And then the parameter for this behavior, um, I could choose that over from my device call. So we select the TCP client device call and we can now browse the various options that exist. Quickly, label status toggle to on off triggers. We'll come back to those because I want to show you the Wild West, which is, yeah, something we need to search up to see it. Okay, um, the idea of this one is that we can just type in some commands. Um, my order to you, submit. And whenever I press this button, uh, and now it's important to have a look at the, the view over here on the side. Um, if I press this button on the panel, which I'm doing right now, you see that we are sending over the text string, my command, my order to the connected of the server we're connected to. So that was the most easy way you can get away with sending a TCP string anywhere. Good news is that let's just see um, if we bring it up again here, then we can do everything we've seen before. We can add those special thingies in here, like um, a hexadecimal code if we want. So we have the full flexibility of that. That has been changed now. I press the button again. You can see there's the hexadecimal code. We get the line ending here as well. So that's super nice. But what I also wanted to highlight is that there's the possibility to also specify the value of a parameter like 12. And in these fields, the meta fields P1 and P2, parameter one and parameter two, you can specify not only literal values, but you can also put in a string, which is a reference to a, another device core. So you can have a variable inside of reactor or constant or even values from, uh, you know, other device cores can be put in here. This is done just quickly for your reference. If you do, um, maybe you can actually edit it like that. No, I don't think we can, but it would be like, if it was a variable, then my parameter, or if it was uh, a constant, it would typ typically be a constant associated with the behavior, and that would be behavior const, and then the constant name, which could be param1, and so on. But right now, we'll just put in the value 12, and then this value 12 will then be uh, put into the command up here. So we can do that by backslash p1, like that, and let's say this is our command, then notice what happens as I now submit and I press this button, watch over here, I press the button and you see it is sending 0c, which is the hexadecimal value of uh, what I just typed in, uh, 12 basically. So now uh, I'm picking up this value 12 from down here and inserting it in this way. So we can do that as many times as we want, which is probably not what you want, but um, you can also have it in, uh, in decimal and we can put it in here as hex. So um, the, the D, the H and the P are just different ways to have it. And by this, I mean, it is spelled out as decimal and hex values. You'll see that now as I am pressing it once again, watch over here. You see the decimal value 12 and you see the hexadecimal value here. So this is useful if you want to build up commands for, uh, because some, sometimes hexadecimal values are transmitted in protocols as human readable numbers instead of actual bytes. So we can do it all, just actual bytes or a ASCII representation of the byte values. It's all possible by how you, how you format that string. So that's super nice. Yes. So that was the cowboy trigger. You can build up anything you want in this way, but we have then the next level of things that you could want to do. And that would be to specify commands, to set up commands that can be reused in a different way. So let's just go back to the home. Um, you don't have to care about this. If, if, if all you have seen right now is enough to keep you going, you can just stop watching, but you can also move on 
and then um, add stuff into the command table. So in the command table, we can add numerous commands. And I think sometime in the future, we'll clean this up to make it a little bit easier to understand this, this overview. But let's just, I've just created two commands, but maybe let's remove the last one and say that we will just work with one. So one command, first command, let's say that we have something that reacts well to a command like play. Play new line. And then there's another command B which would be stop. So I want to create something that toggles between play and stop, play and stop as we are pressing the button repeatedly. I could describe that behavior. That's only for my own sake. And then um, give it a label. Let's call that playback. And then the matching return value. And this is where we can put in a regular expression because let's say that the device that we are trying to control reports back with a status and that status can to some extent be decoded. If we can decode that right here, that value will get right into the device core. So for instance, we can imagine that as I am starting playing, the device would feed back a command line like playback status equals, and then um, it, it could be true or false. Um, so in a regular expression sense, this is how you would do that. And the, inc the capsulation uh, inside parentheses here is uh, what ends up in our device core. It will be the value true or false as strings. But you will see that in a moment as we experiment with this. So let's just save that. Um, actually, let's just add another command. Now we have made the first one here. We will just make a second one. And uh, what would that second one be? Let's just make a simple, simple uh, uh, let's say that it's a uh, trigger auto white balance on some kind of camera. And the command looks like this new line. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm, okay, so let's just imagine that we, we want to put in a parameter from one of the meta values because there might be different auto white balance. Um, banks and they are numbered by numbers which usually is an a on b but let's just put in slash d1 so that we insert the decimal value of the parameter one that we have so that's what i'm doing right now so avb trigger we give it that label um we don't match on any return value and uh, my save button is disabled which is uh, strange but um yeah so i <laughs> I need to put in something in the description. Hey, and then we go save. All right, so we go back to configuration now because what I want to do is to, on my second button here, I'll now um, also create a behavior. And we find our device core and select it. And then we can use the toggle here. So let's just try that out right away. But we also need to determine which of these commands it is. So actually this list of numbers, unfortunately, it is only a list of numbers like one, two, three, and so on. But one is the first command that we have in there. Two is the second command and so on. So we just need to choose that as it is. So I'm now sending the first command like this. And I can now press the button on the panel and you'll see that it's like on and off. And notice what happens over here in the window. It's actually sending play and stop forth and back. So how do it know? Does it know that we have play and stop, play, stop, play, stop? That is an internal register in the device core. So we don't know if the device has actually picked it up. Unfortunately, basically, you assume that things are working, but you don't know if they do. And that's kind of the premise that you are under. If you have this generic TCP firing command, then you generally don't know if the device picks it up correctly. But at least you can see that we can put this on and off. Now, if you look at the display right here in, in Reactor, you can see that it, the title, and this is also what I see on my panel next to me, that title is zero. I was just pushing this button and we get that on and off effect, which I think we can do if we enable this one. So we get the same here. Um, okay, I just had a little break here because I had some previous code in the system. So what you would meet if you start this up and run this, it would be something like this, that after adding the parameter here for toggling, you would see either a suggestion for something or you would have to select Skahoy trigger as the action. And if you do that, this is what you'll see in the, um, in the little window. Um, 
No, 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 no. Actually, no, no, no. It should be toggled. Sorry about that. Um, a trigger would be the great one to choose for the on and off, but we'll just choose toggle. And then you have the on and off. So what I showed you just before would be available to you, but the title would be command toggle slash command. All right. So the, what I wanted to show you was that if you show more, if you go to default feedback, then you can change the title of this one by editing it and type in whatever you think is cool. Come on, like that, submit. And it now says whatever, but it's likely that you want this to come from a, a uh, device call. And we have, after all, entered a label, which we know is available. I think I said that, so um, I wanna add a dynamic value. And uh, if I do that, I can search up in the device call here, Say I want to have the label and I want that label to be for the first command, command number one, submit, submit. And now it takes playback and that playback title is coming from inside my configuration where I called this one playback. So far so good, that's that's nice, isn't it? Um, now the, uh, the, the toggle function of this one is really coming from the internal state of um, the, the bit that we are manipulating inside the device core. So it's it's not fully true, but we can also over here add uh, another behavior. Let's try that where we use one of the others, which would be the on trigger. And as we are sending the on trigger, basically for the first one here, I just sent that one. Um, it is, it's not going to flip any bit anywhere. It is just going to send the value. Let's try this out. Uh, so just to confirm, if I press this one first, let's try to do that. So I press it and you watch over here, you see that it's still toggling play and stop forth and back because those were the two commands we had. But now as I'm tr tr triggering this one, you see it's just sending play all the time. Every time I press that, it's sending play. So, and that's the, the point of this one, that it is sending command number A. So we should, for the completeness of things, press here, or I don't know, let's just add a device core parameter for toggle off for the first one and submit, toggle off. Let's try that. So as I'm pressing on this one, you see it says stop over here. And as I'm pressing here, it says play. Okay, so far so good. And that should correspond with what we, we have in that action. Now, uh, we had this feedback from uh, the device that we, oh, well, f actually what we wanted to do would be to go in here and show more and then you would change stuff like the title line you would just hard code this label to be and that is now the title of of this one that's super nice so let's say that i did this on the other one then uh, let's just uh, change this one like that and stop okay so so we have now those two labels in here i could also change this push and turn thingy so that either it would be completely without a title Ooh. I could not do that. Uh, okay, trick might be to make, um, yeah, I don't know if it's going to accept that. No, it's not because it's trimming the value. Let's just play back. Okay, so we just type in a title. Actually, if you really want to avoid, avoid inhibit, uh, inheriting things, you can, you can use this one, don't inherit. And that would actually allow me to do this completely. So I won't see that like that. Okay, so now the title is gone. Mm, I could do that for this one too. Don't inherit and it won't pick up anything from the back. So what is inheriting? That is taking whatever is defined for the behavior Skahoy trigger, which is push and turn, and then uh, overriding that with our own value, which is what we're doing here in this line, but we should maybe not do it for the others. Actually, what we wanna do now is to look at the feedback. Now for the feedback, I just want to show you that uh, if if you uh, are familiar with, hmm, um, the test tube for the device call, we have the device call running on my device, which has this IP address. And if I run the test tube, then it will open up a browser window here. 
And in that browser window, you can actually see a few things. Like if I go to toggle, you can see this is the status on and off of our uh, of our toggle value, and uh, that means that means this value, which is currently all off. And let me just turn it on. Then let's go over to this UI. You can see now it's on. If I turn it off, then if I go back here, it's now off. If I go over here and turn it on, then back here it's now on. So I'm actually having a another view into the values of the device call for the TCP here. And so what I wanted to show you was that inside the status here, then we have currently no status on these things. But we have defined this regular expression back in the definition of this model. Remember this regular expression right here that says if there's a match on this string, playback status, and then either true or false, then it's going to place the value true or false in that register. So whoops, let me just copy this one and then let's go over here and then over in our server let me just try to see what happens if i write playback status true no wait what if i write playback status hello it wouldn't match anything but if i write playback status true like that it will match on the true and it will place the value true as a feedback value for for this one so i try playback status false and it will play false in here so the point is, if we go back to Reactor, what we can now do is to create some kind of feedback on one of these buttons here. Uh, let's say that we want play to light up green if we are actually playing back. So we could go to the conditional feedback here, which is already using the on intensity, but it is relating the on intensity to whether we have just pressed the button. So this is what this one says. We can change this. So let's just edit the behavior, uh, the, the active if condition for setting the on state. I will change that into looking for the device call and then looking up the status for command number one. And then I will check if this is equal to true. And if it is, that's our condition, then this one should light up and it should also have a red color. So, um we can now try out over here playback status true and uh, we should now see that this is actually true over here and it is not doing the thing that i wanted to which is probably because it did not pick up the value correctly as i intended it to do so let's see if we can edit this by hand somehow since it's not willing to do this in the right way. Uh, am I doing anything wrong here? I think I'm not doing anything wrong, but I am now going to open the JSON editor because that is sometimes a little bit useful. And uh, in the JSON editor here, you can see that we could actually put in the string, true. Save, and now we get it read. Let's try to just playback status false, then we actually turn it off again. So there you see how we can manipulate this, although our UI has some quirks to accept the proper true or false value, string value that is um, communicated. Finally, in this video, I'll just mention that we actually have a little library of uh, master behaviors that can be helpful. Master behaviors are what you find in this dialog. And um, there's always the Skahoy master behaviors here, but sometimes you can also add additional ones. and. I, I'm not sure that we have it as a feature in here just yet where you can basically select it, but I'm going to show you how you can do this again with the JSON editor, which is super nice. Uh, no, wait, it was the wrong place. I want to go and manipulate this, the whole layer. So um, if you're into JSON and I know some of you guys go crazy when you see JSON, like in a good way, you really love it and you feel like you can do everything, you know, in the world in this way and you can in Scala universe you know that's the native language underlying everything so what you're basically seeing here is all the configuration we just did so in a very nice json format so let's just um uh, see if we can do something here if i start putting in something new then you can hold down control and space and then you you can kind of see what options you have i'm going to import master behaviors and uh, the master behavior that i want to import would be core protocol uh tcp so that is the device call name, uh, like the technical name. 
And if I put that in, save this current file, and then I go back to the configuration here, then you will notice that as I'm, uh, let's say, editing, adding a behavior, then actually down here, I have now, um, I should have somewhere in here, um, I don't know if I need to reload really. Or maybe I need to to select where I'm actually putting it because I need to put that stuff on this layer. Okay, am I? No, I think I was kind of down here and trying to put this one. So can we delete A5 down here? We can. Okay, so that's nice. And then I want to add something up here on the testing TCP layer. Yes. So if I create a behavior right here, we should see in this list at the bottom, you have a protocol connection. So if we pick this one, actually uh, what it will do is to show whether or not we are connected. Um, one thing that you need to add to the layer for this one to work, because actually if you look at the code of protocol TCP connection, which is kind of difficult to look at here, uh, then you'll see, no wait, um, if you press show more, then you can see that we are looking for the device called by its device index. A device index is used to make sure that you're talking to the right thing. And actually the whole TCP device call here is able to connect to multiple servers. How can I know that? Well, because you can add devices, right? So if you, uh, if you go in here and you add another a TCP server a device call here, then now you have your second ID, device ID, and there's another server address and port number that you can use, and you'll be talking to that one if you use the right ID. So going back to configuration, you'll see on all these, I inserted that little number one is actually referring to the first one. And if I change that to the second one, then it's trying to connect to the second TCP connection instead. And that's because this is how device calls work. You pull together any amount of similar type devices and you index them by this number. So um, the way this whole library of, of master behaviors work is that it assumes that you have set up that variable device index on beforehand, um, which we'll now do just quickly device index. It's such a well typically used um, a variable. So uh, let's just, uh, we start it up here and we just force it to the value, you know, one by setting min and max and center to be that. So it's always going to give us a one. And that actually means that we uh, should now have a valid value of, no, no, it's not default to first. That's the one that we need. So now it is one, the variable value device index is one and it's lighting up green. Awesome. If I press this button on my panel, it is actually going to disconnect. And then after one second, it will reconnect. Let's try that. And you can even see it over here. You see that remove entry one. That's the response from the IP server that there was one client that disappeared shortly. So pressing, you disconnect, you connect again. Um, I thought that was useful. This is why I made it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was useful and gave you a good introduction to the TCP device call. Let us know if you have any comments.